Welcome to this session on customizing the Dynamic View C. Now in this session, we'll make modifications to the Dynamic View Seed for the architectural floor plan and incorporate some of the project standards that we set up earlier. So I'm in the design model and I have applied the saved view for the architectural floor plan. So the XYZ arc floor plan, and I simply do that by using the apply saved view and selecting the view. Go ahead and do a fit there. And then if I go to the view attributes for the view, and we'll open up that dialog, pull that over there. I can set, for instance, presentation settings or, or my uh, view setup, view seat options. There's a number of tabs here. We'll start here with the presentation. And so these would be the way the view attributes would be set when I create a new dynamic view. So for instance, if I would like markers to be on in any new view that I create, I might want to turn on the markers here. If I don't want that, you know, that background grid on, I might turn that off here. If I didn't want that ACS triad to show, I would turn that off here. Then I'll go to the building options here. And there's several tabs here, some general tabs and then uh, the different disciplines. So this is a floor plan view. We are going to want drawing symbols on. Typically you want to unify. Um, same is true for the cut view. Uh, if we apply patterns, then we get these hatch patterns in, in things that are cut through like walls where they're, they're defined. Um, you can choose to align hatch patterns, meaning um, they align with the geometry, might want to do that. The other thing we could do that's not on here is to generate center lines. So if a particular family or part has a center line symbology, you can turn that on. You can um, and make sure that those connect at corners. I'm going to actually turn on a back view for my floor plan and then have it um, come in as dashed so that we can see soffits above and so forth. So if, if I intend to do that, I want to make sure I turn on this apply reflections on the back view. Also might want to turn on grid lines so that if you have a, a building grid set up in your grid manager, then that will be displayed on the drawing. Now let's switch to the architectural tab. This is where you set up rules. Now these are annotation rules. Um, in the case of structural and mechanical, they're actually re-symbolization rules as well. But we'll just take a look at simply uh, creating a new architectural rule using the space annotation that we set up. Now let's take a look at the current space rule. And we'll go ahead, if you, if you go to the modify rule icon, it will open up another dialog and then we can select edit the rule. And you can see we have a, a rule name and a description. It indicates uh, that this is plan annotation. It applies to any spaces. And in this case, we have checked here, use default annotation assignment. If you remember, in an earlier session, we set up the default annotation assignment and we changed it to the XYZ space tag that we had created. So that's what this rule would use. And if we wanted to to modify that, we could actually just go and change the default tag that's used and we wouldn't have to change any rules. So I'm going to go ahead and close that. But we could also create new rules. And so let's just go ahead and create a new rule here. And we'll call this the XYZ space rule. Again, it's plan annotation and it will apply to a space. But in this case, instead of using the default annotation assignment, we'll simply pick the cell here. So again, I'm going to pick the XYZ space label. That means if this rule is defined for a particular drawing, then it will always use the XYZ space label, it won't matter what the, the default 
annotation is set to. So let's go ahead and save that rule and we can see that here and then we can even so we can select our new rule and select update and we can see that it is now the space rule defined here. The next tab is the clip volume settings. So the clip volumes are display styles that can be used to override some of the family and part symbolization, but they're essentially what makes the model look like a line drawing. Now, if you notice here, we have color, various colors on our line work, and that's defined by the family and part system. We could, for instance, change the display style on our forward and cut view so that we use a forward drawing black that would make all the line work black and the cut drawing black. And you can see how all the, the line work then becomes black or white on the black background. But we could also turn on a back view, as I was saying, and And then if I change the display style to the one we created earlier, which was a back drawing dashed, we can begin to override some of that back view. So in other words, we're seeing solid headers across these doors here. And if I change that to my XYZ back drawing dashed, I now have dashed black lines there. So just using those display styles to to customize how we see the drawing work. There's one more tab here, which is the view seed options. And these actually determine well that detailing symbol style that we just set up. So we could set that to the XYZ default that we just created. We can also set here a discipline and a purpose. So this determines which templates are used with which tools. And so this would be used with the, the floor plan tool and it would get tagged as an architectural drawing. And then on the building designer tab, we can set the range of the dynamic view. So where is the cut plane relative to our floor and, and how far forward do we look and how far back? So we've got the, the cut plane from the active floor, it's going four feet above the active floor. And then the forward view is offset zero, meaning it goes right to the active floor and then that's all the further it looks. If you maybe had some recessed areas or you wanted to see something that was below the floor, you might want to change that offset and maybe you want to go down a foot or, or more. You could also set this to previous floor so you could look down one floor or unlimited if you needed to look all the way down through a space, for instance, in an atrium or something like that. So we'll just leave it at that. Or if you want to keep your, your floor plans fairly clean, maybe that's just zero. And then as far as the back floor, again, you could go to the next floor and then say offset minus one foot from that. Or in this case, since I'm really just trying to pick up some soffits, we might be able to say, well, let's go from the active floor and we'll go up perhaps 10 feet. We don't want to see too much information up there. We want to pretty much keep it to maybe some door headers and, and some ceiling soffits. So now we've got our drawing looking the way we want it. I'm going to close the view attributes. Then I can go back to my saved view dialog and I want to update this saved view, this XYZ arc floor plan with the changes that we just made. So we do that with this icon, select the, the arc floor plan and then use the update saved view. Now there's a little dialogue comes up here and you just want to make sure you don't turn on that update camera position. There's no need to update the camera. We're simply updating the saved view and you just left click in the view and then that's up to date. So all the dynamic view settings are updated. In the next session, we will update the drawing which is linked to the dynamic view. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.